information to deliver a feature of new experiences. 各位贵宾，各位媒体朋友，欢迎来到英特尔个人电脑用户端专题演讲。接下来，让我们欢迎最风趣声高的讲者——英特尔副总裁及个人电脑用户端事业群总经理 Mr. Mooney Eden 上台，与我们分享英特尔如何领导 PC 的转变，创造未来的全新体验。Let's welcome Mr. Mooney Eden. What should I do with all these things? 
And I was trying to speak about the benchmark, I was trying to speak about the drivers. I tried to explain it to my wife, but for my wife, the driver is the person that's sitting behind the wheel. <laughs> so I gave up. It's been, we need to speak to them in usage mode to explain them what they can do today that they couldn't have done before. This is the experience. If we're trying to look at the experience, we see people, three people doing different tasks, different jobs. They're doing Excel and PowerPoint and Picasa. They're playing games. They are watching video, they are trying to edit video, they are changing the format, which we call transcoding, and the question is, what part of the system is more important to achieve this usage model? Is it the CPU, is it the GPU, or is it the media? Or in other words, because there's a lot of argument to the press, which part is more important? CPU, GPU, or media? So let's test it. Let's look at some of the examples. And for this, I would like to have David helping me. Hi, David. Hi, David. Hi, David. Great. Can be better. I believe that you're going to show us some demos. Well, exactly. I have an incredible example here for you. And it's called uh, the Portraiture from Ignomix. It's part of the Adobe Lightroom collections. OK. And it's, we're actually going to apply some filters on some of my favorite subjects, which is like some filters. I am a normal human being. What do you mean by apply some filters? Okay, well, actually, let me start it off and we'll discuss it. Please do. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK, careful. Then you start it on same image and previous generation. We can see them right side by side. And? Well, as you notice, we're applying these filters. It's actually improving the blemishes, the skin tone. All these filters have It's actually kicking in turbo right now. So they can improving the skin tone. Yes. So it's kind of digital Botox. Digital Botox, yeah. <laughs> Surgery plastic. Well, take 10 years off you. Take 10 years off my Well, hey, off you, I don't know. It's, it's probably the next generation I can go. So this latest, we can do it. Yeah, exactly. It's we're going to see that in a few seconds. Yes, okay, so yes, you yes, see yes, the performance is happening. We are doing it on several pictures in parallel. Yeah. And Actually, what we are trying to do the same way that you get rid of red eye, we take a picture, we want to remember ourselves sometimes a little bit nicer than we are, <coughs> take away all the defects, all the blemishes, everything, and try to look at the picture. Okay. So why would you show us how it looks before and after? By the way, the system on the right, which is the current generation, we speak about responsiveness, finished, you can look at your own leisure on the system on the bed left, which is not the best system. The ladies want it. Cleaning everything, but then people like this, and, and gentlemen also say, wow! <laughs> but this is a, kind of an example using the reason I want to show you, because in this specific example, this was CPU intensive. The general purpose CPU was working in order to deliver this kind of example. Exactly. Why don't we take to another example? Well, we're going to look at the media performance now, so what I'm going to do is actually bring up another app that we have here. It's called Bottom Room from Elemental Software. And what you're trying to do is? We're actually going to transcode a video. Transcode. So for those of you who do not know what's transcode, transcode is encoded and decode. Is it clear now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the phone. Okay, so rather than speaking technology again, if I want to take a file and change the format, I want to take a clip and put it into my iPhone. I want to take some movie that I have and upload it to YouTube. In a te technical manner, you need to change the format of the file. That's what's transcoding. And you can see on the right, it's already done. Yes, it's done already. And on the left? Yes, it's still going. It's going to try to take And time. again, we spoke about it, but we did special accelerators. And I believe that transcoding in the new generation is more than 8x faster. So if you want to convert a file or download something to your iPhone, etc., you can do it in a minute or two minutes rather than waiting more than 15. So this part is what we refer to the media part. And we've got another example. Yes, I think. Well, you know, let's go back to this. That's actually quick video solution for that. But now we're going to look at the graphics section here. And we've got two systems. One system is with actually a game called World of Warcraft, Cataclysm. And we're starting that off and see we have it up here on screen. Very popular game, casual game. The interesting thing that you see over here, that on one of the screens, you've got the process of graphic, or the integrated graphic, which is part of Sandy Bridge, and on the other one is the discrete graphic, and the challenge is to know which one is the discrete, 
which one is cut built into Sandy Bridge, and I'll touch on it later on. And as you can see on these games, I will show some other examples. It will be very difficult to differentiate what is done on what. And this is the Sandy Bridge. So what I showed you is three things. We show you some features or some application that use the CPU, some application that use the GPU, and some application that use the media. And let me ask you again the same question. What is more important, the CPU, the GPU, or the media? Now, you can see me, I cannot see you, there's no light. But how many of you think the CPU is more important? Raise your hand, please help me. By the way, even if it's something very stupid, it's okay, your friend will not see you, it's very dark. <laughs> Okay, I cannot see, so I'm not trying to do that. It means some people say the CPU is more important. Some people say that the GPU is more important. Let me give you a hint. The people say the GPU is more important. Normally, they don't have a very strong CPU, right? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that all the three are important because it depends on the application that you are using. And more than that, the thing that will define your satisfaction from your PC is not the best thing, but the worst thing, you can great, have a great CPU and media, a lousy graphic, you come to play a game, you have terrible experience. You can have a great graphic and media, you try to do this spacelifting, thing, it will sit next to your PC and you wait for a long time, or if you do PowerPoint or whatever, and you have a lousy experience. And the magic world, and I'll touch on it several times when I speak about Sandy Bridge, and even more so when I speak about Ivy Bridge, <coughs> is that the system needs to be balanced. All the components need to have the same level, and whenever we see a bottleneck, we need to resolve this bottleneck in order to deliver this great experience. Now, let me ask you a question. What's in common to all the things that you are going to see over here in the screen? Play the video, please. <laughs> of your body 
And I showed you some effort that we did together between Sixth Sense, which was the company that developed it, Razer, which is the company that built this joystick that are doing many fascinating mouse joystick keyboard, and Valve, which was right, ready to use, which was writing the software that was doing the game, in this case it was Portal 2. Now, one year later, rather than telling you about it and waving my hand, I would like to invite on stage the person that called himself Chief Gamers and CEO of Razer, Milia Armin. Doing. Generally, I don't like to get you on stage because you hijack the parade. You look great. Look at the parade. Yes. So, <laughs> what, what, do you want some private time? <laughs> okay, but anyway, you bring over here. Okay. Anyway, this is the Razer Hydra. It's the world's first motion sensing game platform for PC. When is it going to be introduced? Well, we've just introduced it this week. Uh, come all the way from California. Bring you the first production sample. So, first of all, thank you very much. This now, is that's for me, I take it. <laughs> it's illegal, I'm not supposed to take it. That's fine, $25. Now, can you tell us what's the difference between this controller and all the other controllers that exist in the market? Because there are many controllers, but definitely this is something special. Sure. What's special about it? Well, it's the first one for PC, definitely. And also, over and above, it's the most precise motion sensing platform ever. And the accuracy is one millimeter of movement and you can even tilt it by a degree and it will register. So actually I can tilt it. I showed you the demo last year. Production world, the gaming will look totally different with this. And to show you how it looks like, we've got over here Jeff from Six Sense to show us. So Jeff, just go and blow it to pieces. Sure. And by the way guys, you can look at his head because actually as you speak, the controller extension of his hands over into the computer, and yeah, this is also to the section of it specifically to take advantage of this sure. controller. There's one to one option, as you can see from uh, what Josh is doing at this point of time. And um, you can pre order right now, we're going to be shipping it, uh, shipping this next week at Razor Zone. Listen, uh, if you're going to have to make promotion on here, I want to have royalties. <laughs> down to eat the booth, Josh is going to be there, some guys from here are going to be there, and don't trust anything that you say, just have this controller, try to play with this, and see how good you are in order to make it happen. Now, the ramp of Sandy Bridge was the fastest ramp ever for Intel Corporation. The fastest ramp ever of Sandy Bridge. But I believe being in Taiwan, I need to take this opportunity and thank you all because guys, there was no way that we could have wrapped it without you doing all this great PC that we see all around. So thank you very much, Sheshe, for all our partners that are here. We've got hundreds of new skills of Sandy Bridge as we speak, and then you could see it all over. Now, for many years I was speaking about mobile, and I said the world is moving to mobile. A year and a half ago I got responsibility for the desktop. So from now on, I don't want anybody to say one bad word about desktop. <laughs> desktop is important. And this is the proof. No, it's not a joke, I'll tell you what to laugh. So, first of all, I want to introduce the case to you, the unlocked processor that used to be in the Extreme Edition. We took it down to mainstream so more people will be able to enjoy it. BTEC say, the Sandy Bridge CPU range is incredible and it has the potential to change the, the, the entire PC industry. If you look at the overclocking, pros, one, two, three, four, cons, nothing, actually the market loved it. More than that, we came with the Z68 that actually was required by the industry. Because when we came with the previous generation of our chipset, either you can do overclocking and play with the discrete graphics, or you can use all these beautiful transcoding, the quick technology and all the media feature that have been in our chipset, but there was no way to use both of them together. We came with the Z68 that enabled you to do the overclocking, you can do the, enjoy the building visual, you can have the new SSD caching that I'm going to cover later on, and you'll be able to use switchable graphics. But it's more than switchable graphics, because switchable graphics, and by the way, I'm running pretty fast, 
So if you understand what I'm saying, do like this with your head. So I know that I can run fast. Okay? And if you don't understand, do like this, you have to be polite. But help me. I need your help. So actually, there's a company which is Lucid Technology that wrote the software so we'd be able to use both things at the same time. Then the screen graphic, if you are playing gaming, if you have SMI or radio from AMD, and at the same time, if you want to do application to take advantage of our processor graphic to be able to enjoy both of them, this is the Lucid Technology, and let me give you a demo that speaks for itself. Yes, David, you were supposed to be here. I'm right here. Okay, what do you yeah. see over here? Well, let's say you're actually a block machine here. But this is, is, for those of you who don't know, this is a desktop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a desktop. You get to see a little bit for Asus. Asus is that. Asus, top of the line. This is something, by the way, that you'll never be able to fit into a notebook. <laughs> it's really high end, every mix. Lots of power hungry, but let's see what we see over here. And the people that have this say, guys, we would like to enjoy the best ever gaming, but we would like to be able to enjoy, take, to record it, transcode it, put it on YouTube for our friends, and here we are jumping between the discrete and the crossover graphic. Yeah. So what do we have here on stage? Yeah, well, we're using a high-end discrete card that some's put in there. We would have actually have this enthusiast game. It's called Section 8. Right? So this enthusiast game, Section yeah. 8. Yeah. But at the same time that we are playing the game, we we'll actually go ahead and start up an application called CyberLink's uh, Media Expresso. And actually what we are doing here is actually transcoding the file in parallel to play, get, to play the game. Exactly. Just a quick sec again to improve and create that three-minute video into something in a different So Lucid Technology, software piece, will enable us to install both things at the same time, very speed traffic, and the goodness of the processor graphic enabled by the Z68 microprocessor. Thank you, But another category which is growing very fast is the all in one. The all in one category continues to rev as we speak, and our OEM are continuing to develop new form factor and much more innovation. We've got systems over here from LGE, Acer, Lenovo, Dell, and HP, and we can see the systems over here. And each system is totally different ID design. If you look at the thickness of the system, you'll be surprised. I've got the LGE system over here. If you look at it from the side, I believe we continue to develop. We see the MSI system, the SU system, and the system are continuing to evolve and get it to be nicer and nicer every time that we speak. But it's not only the OEM. We got also requests from the channel to be able to continue and compete in this category. And for that, we developed the thin mini ITX, which is a standard motherboard that was designed specifically in order to fit into the only one. And by this, first of all, accelerate time to market and make it much simple for the channel to service these systems. And what we see over here is system from ECS, from Maytech, and from Gigabyte. All these systems that you see over here are using the same mini ITX motherboard in order to be able to help the channel compete also and deliver the solution that they want. Now, as we grew the all-in-one, we start getting requests from our customers and they say, you know what, the interesting thing is all-in-one that it's nice and pretty and for that reason, rather than hiding it under the table the way we used to do, with the big, blue and beige and boring desktop they used to do in the past. They are nice, and we put them on the table. But we are sitting next to it, and sometimes the fan makes too much noise and it's annoying. And the question to us was, is there any way you can help us? And the answer is, definitely we can. I've got only one request. If you can turn around the camera for 25 seconds, Thank you. And guys, if you can prevent taking picture for the next 45 seconds, then I'll let you get, take pictures, okay? Now, if you see somebody next to you taking a picture, break his head. <laughs> it's okay with me. So please, guys, really, I ask you, please do not take pictures. And I'm supposed to have some partner over here to help me? Yes, where did you hide? Your side? Okay, so remember the request was, guys, we would like to be able to get rid of the 
<laughs> Sam, what do we have over here? This is an old computer. Yeah, it's, it's a, a diesel. Yeah, it's a 95 watt platform. Um, and what we've done is we've developed a cooling solution that does not require. I really appreciate the people who don't take pictures right now. I really appreciate the people who don't take pictures. <laughs> Guys, he's <laughs> like Hebrew accents. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Can you break yourself, please? <laughs> please, it will be, guys, I have to stop the demo. I will really ask you, don't take pictures, we will be able to take pictures. <laughs> no, that's not true, you have to do <laughs> Okay, all right, so what do we have over here? So, what we've done is we've taken a phantom, it's a completely fanless solution. So it's a 95 watt system, with no fan. No it should be quiet, you see that you cannot hear the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow smoke in the bottom here. You'll see the string lines of the air. And basically what's happening is we're heating the air in the bottom, and it's, it's pulling in cold air as the heat is rising through the channel here. So this is actually the same phenomena that we have with a chimney. It's a chimney. What you see is a way of self-cooling the system. And it's a 95 watt system that you can have on your, on your table, and this system does not have any uh, fan at all. Okay. And if those of you who would like to take pictures, it's okay to take pictures now. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the famous home platform. Gradually, you will see more and more of this solution as we move forward. Definitely, we pay the deal. We would like to give it to our customers, but we'll be able to deliver all in one system. You'll be able to put it on your table, and you'll not have the annoying noise on the phone due to this special cooling. And definitely, if we speak about thin system and transformation, we need to have to put more and more effort into this cooling stuff. Now, Sean mentioned in his talk that we are going to go through transformation, and the transformation of the is actually something we are looking for several years. And it's actually forcing us to think differently. And for those of you who are kind of old timer like me to spend the time designing microprocessor, it's almost an identity crisis. It was not so simple. Because if you look at it, for 20 years, the way that we used to work is we design microprocessor. And if you deliver more performance, 5 or 10% more CISMAR, you got your way for eternity. You will be remembering the books of microprocessor as somebody that did something great. On top of the microprocessor, you've got some software that you throw, and it's called operating system. You took the two together, you threw it over the market. People wrote application, and applications are actually the one that deliver the user experience. Today, when we are moving forward, and I believe we already adopted it when we did Sandy Bridge, we are doing it even more. We start by asking ourselves a very tough question. What are the user experience that's going to happen in 2013 and 2015? And gentlemen, I hope that there's no record, but these are very real people. You come to Intel and you see psychologists, anthropologists, all these kind of is that didn't choose to live in Intel in the past. <laughs> Suddenly these people accommodate places in Intel and they are coming to tell the microprocessor architects what to do. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> so actually we start asking what? Why? I said because the question is what are we going to improve? Which part? And I'll come to you in a second. Then we look what is the software that we need? Do we need vector processing? Do we need to accelerate the media? Do we need something special for rebounding? Do we need some general purpose? And only after we finish to define it, we ask ourselves what's the form factor? And people say people would like to go with something thin. So we go to the designer and say this is your budget. You've got 50 watts, go and do miracle. But all the budget definition is defined by the user experience, and only then we do the microprocessor. Now, there's a lot of confusion in the market, because people think that if you start with user experience, microprocessor do not need to be powerful. The microprocessor need to be very powerful, it's still relevant. But when we are doing the microprocessor 2015, the question is what should we improve? Remember what you spoke about. Should we improve the media? Should we improve the graphic? Should we improve the general purpose CPU? Should we improve all of them? And this is actually an outcome of the definition of what is the user experience. Now, this is not the first transformation that Intel is trying to lead. In 1995, actually we had one transformation. 
The old time over here probably remembering, it was the MMX transformation. The pension MMX. The transformation was from enterprise to consumer. In 1995, most of the PCs have been sold to enterprise. You do Excel spreadsheets, you do productivity activities. Enjoy yourself? God forbid. <laughs> this is not a PC. And we say, guys, first of all, every PC will have a CD ROM and people will be able to consume video. On this strange idea, in 1995 when we spoke about it, this was kind of revolution. People are going to consume video on PC, 1995. Interesting enough, eight years later, remember the number, eight years later we came with the Nitex transformation. This was the Centrino transformation in 2003. And I believe many of you lived in order to remember this transformation, this transformation from, from desktop to mobile and wireless connectivity. And when we say that you have wireless connectivity everywhere, in every hotel, in every lounge, people are laughing at us. Today you will not sign into a hotel if you don't have the wireless connectivity. Exactly eight years later, today, we are coming with the next transformation that we are trying to drive. And Sean announced it as the ultra full transformation. It's going to be ultra thin because people care about the form factor. It's going to be ultra secure and I'll speak about it because security is getting more and more important. It's going to be ultra responsiveness. And somebody say it's going to be ultra amazing. So actually, we are going to drive this transformation. And like Centrino, it took us almost three years to drive this transformation. We started transformation now, but we believe it will take us two, two and a half years to complete it, all the way from Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and Haslam. What we have over here is some systems that I believe later on you'll be able to get to stage and see. But this is some fascinating system. This system will be shown today on stage is the Asus UX21. Unbelievable thin system. You look at it and you fall in love with the system and say, I would like to have these systems. I've got in the compound system again. Unbelievable thin system. If you look at the form factor, all of them below 0.7 inch. I've got the Lenovo u 300 a kind of system that I believe everybody will be very willing to adopt immediately. I've got the Samsung Series 9 and I've got the LG P220, which I'm sure many of you will come and take picture. The interesting thing, and that's the reason I say it's a revolution, besides the other features that I'm going to cover, many of these PCs are going to go into mainstream. And I believe this is the important thing to understand. Many of them are going to go into mainstream. Now, People told us we would like to have very thin form factor. Let's admit the acceptance of MacBook Air was very nice. We tested the market. Many people say we would like to get this form factor. But there's another thing that people said. People say, you know, we are not willing to wait for the PC. We would like to get instant on. So let me repeat some of the demos. I still have to have argument with Sean later on. If I was the first one to do the demo, he stole it from me, or he was the first one, and I stole it from him. But definitely, this is a system that we show. The system is in hibernate. We show that actually the battery is outside, so there's no question the system is in hibernate. When you open it and you want to switch the system on, rather than waiting 20 or 30 seconds, why would you switch it on? And we can come together. Five, four, three, two, Zero. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, go two, one and a half, one, you know, we put our waste. But the point is that you can get the system and you don't need to wait for the system to boot because this is something which is really annoying. The other thing which I'll take you a very quick example is the Lenovo. And it's the feature that we call smart connect technology, or as we develop it, we call it always on, always connected. And again, every repeat what Sean said very slowly. If the system switches on, the last thing I want to do is now wait for the system to synchronize with all the activity that the pin in the background. So if there's something interesting, if there's a tweet, if there's an email, only thing I want them to be fed into my system, even when the system is asleep. So once I open the system, not only that the system will come on instantly, but I'll be able to access the content or the relevant content in a very far mode. So let's look at it. We've got over here the system. You switch the system on. Again, it was in hibernate mode. 
from the beginning of my presentation. Five, four, zero. Okay? So I see over here is some data. And I don't see what you have over here. Well, oh, actually, we had took a ton of pictures while you were in, you know, in the audience right now, and some days in the folders. So these are systems that have been taken before I see that. This is the education that you can show the specifically one. Yeah, let's actually go back here. There we go. And your favorite. Sure. And this is a picture that they've been taken just before I got on, on stage. And the system has been streamed into the system. So once the system is on, all this content is available. This is the smart connect technology, or as we used to call it, always on, always connected. Another technology that we have is the smart cat, smart response technology. And remember, there's two things. One, when I switch off the system, on the system, I want it to wake up immediately. The other thing is when I want to load the application, I want this application to load pretty fast and I don't want to wait too long. We've got a combination of two things we need to choose from. Either I've got hard disk drive, where I've got great capacity, one terabyte, half a terabyte, but it's relatively slow, even if you take 7,200 hours here. Or I can have an SSD, which is very, very fast, but relatively very expensive. What we try to do is to combine the goodness of both, come with a very big hard disk drive, complement it with 20 or 40 gig of cache, and try to make sure that the whole system looks to you like if everything is an SSD. So we've got three systems over here. By the way, this demo is an all in one. But we've got over here a notebook with Fujitsu, so you'll be able to test the main road, the tend to see. What are the three things? So why would we start with the demo? Okay, here's on the top three. One, two, two three. This is working as well? Yeah, this is working. Yeah, right there. No, you can't. Okay, so the system here yeah, is on the left. This one's the one with the higher disk drive, man. It's hard, very big hard disk drive, 7200 RPM, but only this drive. I'm not sure, right? Over here. They have a solid state drive in that one. Yes, awesome. and over here we've got the big disk drive with a smaller cache, exactly. 20 meg cache. Then by mistake you started it too late. But it'll still give us the timer, so we'll okay. save time. So we look at the system, and what we are trying to do is to take a few hours of activities, kind of opening the application, closing the application, looking at you Picasa, closing to Picasa, and we are trying to condense everything, closing and opening to a very fast way. I see one of the systems already finished in 33 seconds. The, which is the SSD. The system that has both the hard disk drive and the SSD, we are, we are advocating, you can enjoy both worlds, took 34 seconds, and the hard disk drive is still working, finishing at 58 seconds. So the smart response technology is the technology to develop with our customers in order not only to give you instant on, but when you want to work and open an application and get a fast response, you'll get it all the time, and this is the application, and again, feel free later on to go and try to play with this. I really admire the left side of this audience. They know to appreciate technology. No reason to you, you still have got a lot of opportunity to show that you understand. Okay. Well, I agree. I It was very interesting. We went to the web and tried to look at Ivy Beach. We found 1.7 million articles about Ivy Beach before we even discussed what Ivy Beach is. <laughs> so that shows a lot of the press guys go off, and many of people in the press are writing a lot about nothing. But never mind, I don't want to go against press. But let me share with you a little bit about some, uh, Ivy Beach. Not too much because we haven't disclosed it yet, but definitely I'm going to show you a little bit. First of all, Ivy Beach. If we are speaking about the way that Intel is developed this technology, we've got the TikTok model. Talk, new architecture on existing process technology. Tick, you take the architecture, you compact it to the new process technology, but you do minimal architecture changes. Again, talk, new architecture on much more mature process technology, and Tick is the compassion. In this way, we decided to reduce the risk by one year we are doing major architecture change and the following year we are doing the process compaction. Let me show you one thing. Ivy Bridge was supposed to be a thick conversion of 70 bits to 22 nanometer. Ivy Bridge is not a thick, it's a big thick plus. 
because in order to make sure that we can deliver the right user experience, we decided to take risks and implement architecture changes inside IDBridge. And for that reason, when you'll accept it, when you get it, and you see the graphic performance, you see some of the additional media features and some other things, I believe many of you will be surprised. So let me tell you up front, IDBridge is not a big, IDBridge at least is a big plus. Sean showed you, by the way, I'm not going to shrink myself. If you look at me, I shrunk enough as it is. So, so, the job. so, so I'm not going to try to go into this machine again. But definitely, if you look at it, I believe we got a great gift from our technology developer, which is the 22 nanometer 3D transistors. You know, this is actually the building block. We got the best Lego in the world, and now people say, go and build me a castle. With such a Lego, we can do miracle. Now, I'm not going to dive into the low-power microprocessors, but I believe we've got a very nice opportunity to go and compete over there, because this transistor can give a designer many, many, many great features. So let's see what we can get. In a nutshell, at the low voltage, if you keep the same voltage, you can get 37% more performance at the transistor level. And if you try to keep the same performance that you got in 32 nanometer and maintain the same performance at the 22 nanometer, we'll be able to do it with half the power. I believe, by the way, when I saw it, it was a huge wow, because interesting enough, this was so secret that when the designers start designing Iverbridge, we got the process file to say what is the behavior, but we didn't know exactly what are the transistor, we just got the parameters, or the designer got the parameters, and we've been able to do it. So no doubt about it, we got a tra transistor that enabled us to put many, many features on IV Bridge in relatively very high performance and very low leakage. And just to give you an example, I believe what we have over here is many, many, many hundreds of billions of transistors of IV Bridge. And you can see it over here. And this is a wafer, 22 nanometer wafer. My friend from Japan. <laughs> okay. By the way, those of you who didn't take picture, you will not have enough chat. You will not have another chat because this paper is going to go out of it because some of you are going to take a close up and do the analysis. I apologize. Let's go to Ivy Bridge features. Sean spoke about the feature that we are going to have in Ivy Bridge. We are going to have smart performance, responsiveness great visual experience, and security built into it. Let me do a deeper dive into some of the features. If you are looking into the smart performance and responsiveness, we spend lots of time working very close in collaboration with our partner in Microsoft on the next generation Windows in order to make sure that you really merge the microprocessor and the operating system together to get the best out of it. And if you remember the triangle that I showed, it's had to do with user experience and then the operating system and then the microprocessor to support it. If you do not tailor it vertically and you do not make sure that you've got a very nice integration, you will not be able to get the best out of it. As a result of this cooperation with Ivy Bridge, you'll be able to get great battery life, unbelievable performance and snappiness, always all, always connected that I showed you before. We are going to have integrated USB 3. And we are going to have Thunderbolt. And I don't know how many of you really understood the demo that showed such show because it's very complicated. But Thunderbolt is actually, think about it, is a very, very fast bus that enables you to take all the I.O. that exists inside the CPU, take it externally, and let you get access into the PCs from a remote location. And this is the Thunderbolt technology. I believe as we move forward, you'll see more and more people are using this technology because actually, you can design a PC with one socket, or later on, I don't know how many of you notice, you can design a PC with no sockets, and I don't know how many people have seen the future of the PC and the pictures, but this is definitely something to think about. If you look at the visual, we are going to deliver much better high-def transcoding, decoding and encoding. Actually, the phone is going to be at such a level that we'll be able to do high-definition, real-time video conferencing, everything in high definition in order to be able to do it. We are going to continue to improve the graphic to a better level, even the 70 degree, and we are going to support the X11. 
And if you are looking at the security, and I'll touch on it later on, we'll have better identity protection, we'll have better encryption, and increased malware protection. I will not speak about it right now, because I'll touch on it in a few seconds. So this is the Ivy Bridge, which is going to come as our next generation. One smart thing that we did in Ivy Bridge is the configurable TDP. I believe that the skills that we are going to see in the future are going to be very interesting. You are going to see tablets, you are going to see clamshells, you are going to see convertible, which can be tablets or clamshells, that you can see all kinds of other crazy ideas that you'll be able to do as we move with the transformation of the PC. But one of the requirements was configurable TDP, TDP is thermal design point, but in a nutshell, without going into the detail, what is the power dissipation of the microprocessor? Because the power dissipation of the solution will define how thick the system is. And some people say, you know, sometimes I will need to sacrifice performance, sometimes I want all the performance, and you Intel, I would like you to deliver to me whatever I want, whenever I want it. So, if you're looking at the nature, and I used exactly this point last year, if we look at the nature of performance, and the way that you need to do it, alternate control delete, you get the task manager, you push performance and you can see over here, and you see that the CPU utilization is kind of 10%. And then people ask me, who if it's 10%, who needs all this performance? And the answer is not 10%. The nature of the thing is that you've got spikes. You don't need the performance, suddenly you open some application, you want the immediate response. You do not play the game, you play the game, you want the immediate response. You want the CPU to be able to give the spice when you need it, and for that we developed the Turbo. The Turbo was a great technology that enabled us to work at a fixed frequency, but when there was performance on demand, we could try to stretch it. I will not go and explain it again, we explained it last year, but if I look at the dual core, for example, if I go quad core and I'm using only two cores, I can take the power of the two cores which are not used, give it to the two cores that are used, increase their power and frequency, and as a result, improve their performance. Are you with me, guys? <laughs> yes, no? Okay. What we are trying to do with configurable TDP is the same thing. Sean told you that we are going to go down to the range of 15 watts. 15 watts will enable you to do 0.7, 0.6 inch PCs. But some of the OEM, I believe, some of them are sitting here probably if I don't buy on the end part, they say, no, no, we would like to go thinner, we would like to go off 5 inches and below, we would like to go even to 12 inches or even to 10, 11, even the lower. Can you give it to us? So the idea was, if this is the nominal TDP that defines 0.7 inch of a notebook, we can enable by software to take this number lower, and as a result, you'll have less performance, but if you be low power, you can make it thinner. Are you with me up to here? Yes. But, thank you. <laughs> but, the challenge is, we say, the snappiness. What's happening when you open an application? And what we did in both cases, we enabled it to turbo all the way up to 25 or 30 watts, and I don't want to say the exact number, both of this one and the other one. So if you see that if you need the performance, you can boost very, very fast, and the question is, just a minute, if the box is very thin, how can you go to the high frequency? And the idea is the following. If most of the time the CPU is idle, it's very cold, for a few seconds, I can even take it much above the normal, the nominal frequency, and it's getting hotter. We look at what's happening in the junction, and when the CPU is too hot, then we take it down. By being able to do this growth to the high frequency and going back, that will give you the responses that that will give you the snappiness, and this is the configurable TDP. What is a brilliant way to use it? If you go on the go device, all these beautiful devices that you see over here, if you go, you say, guys, you know what? I would like to have a thin system, I would like it to be 15 watts, and when there will be application, I want to use it. But when I'm going home, and I've got my docking station, maybe I want to change the format of a movie. Maybe I want to do editing to my picture. I don't want the snappiness, I want to have high performance all the time. If we go home, we put it on the docking station, and if you've got a good cooling on the docking station, we can move the power high, as if the system is thicker, it's not thicker, but you just provide better cooling, as a result, you can deliver better performance 
for a longer time. This is the configurable TDP. I assume that you'll hear a lot about it. The technical people over here probably will see the usage, and I believe this will enable us to have all these beautiful form factors that we are going to see in the near future. So totally different <coughs> domain, which we try to address with the transformation starting with hybrid bridge. And this is the horror stories that you hear over here about the security breaches. I had a chance to meet with some of my colleagues with NEC. The numbers are scary. Sometimes 60,000 breaches per day. People are trying to attack new systems. And guys, it's not students or kids that are trying to get some fame by having some kind of a virus. It's an organized crime that is trying to go into your database and do some damage. In the same transactions, all kind of things that actually can really harm you. Now, I will not try to do what I did last year. I believe it was here. I almost should. And I say, try to imagine that you are coming one morning, you open your PC, you look at your bank account, and you see that it's zero. And then I was quiet in order to make an impression. And then somebody in the crowd they was jumping, yes! I said, what should you say? I'm in terrible debit. So this was, <laughs> this was not the point. The point is that people are working over there, trying to attack our database, trying to attack our PC. And you can see it went all the way to website. Sony was attacked for phishing. Millions exposed message in Epsilon security. Every day that you open, you can see some attempt to breach our content. Now let's admit it. You store your digital life in notebooks. Your pictures, your videos, your experiments, your mail, your history. Actually, you take away the database. You take away part of your life. And that's what we'll be trying to address. We'll be able to try to address it in four different vectors. One is when you access your system or services, we we'll try to do it in a more secure way. We call it IPT, identity protection. We we'll try to make sure that the identity protection technology is built into your new systems, into your ultrabook system. We'll build in the identity protection. We'll describe it in more detail, probably in the IDF. We will not for, for, go all the way down to the, you know, for obvious reasons, this is the security engine, security hub, you do not want to explode, to expose it. We are going to try to defend you against hidden Trojan horses and all this kind of software that people are trying to put into your system by developing special ways to secure it even more. We are going to try to help you to secure data by making sure that whenever you do anything, it will be encrypted into your disk. And in order to make sure that when you read the right, you do not spend too much time, we try to deliver special instructions built into the CPU, so when you do it, it will be accelerated, it will be done very, very fast. And we try to make sure that if, unfortunately, your PC is stolen, we'll be able to send a suicide pill and kill it from remote, because when you lose a PC, and I don't know how many people it's happened to you, it's happened to me approximately one per month, <laughs> Last time I forgot it in the pocket of the airplane, I went out to find Oh, I don't have my PC. The problem is not the PC, the PC is not the problem. The problem is my database. Is there any way I can do it? And the last thing is if you are attacked, are there anything we can develop in order to enable fast recovery? And we are going to work on all these four vectors in order to be able to make it happen. So, I was thinking about Ivy Bridge. And I told you what some of the features of IDB. I spoke about the 22 nanometer, which is a very complicated technology. And many people ask me about what is the health of IDB. So rather than tell you what the health of the IDB, I would like to show you two IDB systems. Why don't you show us some things on the IDB system? Sure, we're going to look at the media performance and semi mesh proof and when it comes out. We're actually going to look at some fresh stuff on here. And here we have. Well, high definition 1080p streams stream from the desktop. So you can see media section 12 high definition stream 1080p stream on an IV bridge system. And from the left, now we're going to look at the graphics performance. And here's a very popular thing 
called StarCraft 2. And we're going to actually play that in Pretty Sun as well, where we're going to have a citizen of the world. And so I'll show you. Thanks, baby. 